That's He's a, just going to be a Skylander. This is a, this is a really good segue into topic two, which is today. This is a little outdated for you listening, but Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Five officially announced. Uh huh. I am super excited. You've been waiting for this game forever. Forever, too. man. Tony Hawk, specifically the Pro Skater, Pro, Pro oh Skater, my God. Pro Skater series, my fucking jam. Yeah, I love it so much. I loved it Thug. all the way, all the way through the, the, all the way even to American Wasteland. I was. Whoa, they, they that's were a good. deep cut. You're getting yeah. deep out there. But like Pro Skaters were definitely the best ones to me, and I love them. One, two, three, and four, so good. Waiting for five. I even like the HD. Like remake reboot collection thing, thing yeah. that they did a couple years ago on PS3 and 360. Finally announced five, and I'm reading through the article today, and I'm fucking stoked. And I start seeing the screens. I'm like, hmm, this looks just like the HD. If you told me this, well, was remember the it's got to run on thing, PS3 and 360. Fine. They're doing that and then, shit. Well, then I start reading, and I'm like, oh, oh, it's coming out on PS4 and Xbox One, and then later on PS3 and 360. That's great. Oh, there's projectiles in some missions that you shoot out of your skateboard. Why? Are you sure now? Because we read it on Colin and Greg Live. Are they, is it, maybe you're throwing something. Whatever. That was in Thug 2, and it was stupid. It was Th- Thug 2, Thug, Thug and Thug 2 were great games. So let's not get ahead of No, Thug was great. Yeah. Thug 1 was great. Thug 2 was a product of the era. Like, it was like, what's great? Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. What's also great? Jackass. Let's put them together because there's some overlap. Ben and, Margera. Yeah. But it was good. He's though. right at the center of that Vim diagram. I, I mean, I people hate on Thug too, and I, I don't think it's fully just. Okay. But uh, I mean, it's definitely not as good as the other ones. All right. But shooting projectiles out of your board. But you're shooting these goddamn projectiles, and like, that sucks, man. It's like, how do you start this sentence saying, "It's Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Five. It's going back to the first four. Oh, here's all this fucking bullshit that no one wants. Like, yeah. There's no one out there that's like, I wish, I wish my skateboard could shoot things right now. Maybe there is, but like not in this game. Definitely not, not in this, this game. game. God damn it! So my my you question to you guys here. is: What are features or what are things in games that you like that suck? Games you like with features that suck. Yes, there you go. Like, Nailed it. Good job, yes, Colin. Yes, yes, yes. Immediate thing that jumps to mind is Uncharted One, when the only way to throw grenades was by using the six axis, mm. and you're like, "Fuck you, fuck you, Sony. Why would you make anyone put this in their game? You know what I mean? Granted, two and three got rid of that. Mm-hmm. Too sweet. But it's like trip typical PlayStation stuff where they're like, we have this crazy new thing that has to be used, so put it in your game and make it be used. Yeah. That's I like- mean, in, for my example, for something like that is Donkey Kong Country Returns on the Wii. I was so excited for it. And it's like, you can't mess this game up. This is going to be great. And it was a great game, except for the fact that Donkey Kong has not many buttons necessary. You fucking move with the D-pad, you jump, and then you roll. But instead of making the roll a button, you had to shake the damn thing. And it's just like that fundamentally changed the flow of the game it was fine it was still fun it was still good but it's like why'd you need to do that it's also imprecise that's the problem with yeah the controls yeah twilight princess is the the game i think about mm-hmm. with that like i wanted to murder someone when i played twilight princess for the first time because i couldn't get it on game i couldn't find it anywhere i've told the story in the past about how i was a senior in college i went to the store i had no money i couldn't afford a wii i went and i'm like uh you know i got my freelance check i was like do you guys have a wii and the guy was like i have one and i was like you know, like, like, uh, and then so I had to wait, like, until the summer of 2007 to play Twilight Princess because the fucking GameCube version was, like, nowhere to be found. Mm-hmm. Fucking infuriating. I, I remember being so mad. Like, seemed, you know, that happened. still seem pretty pissed about it. <laughs> I, I, I was because I think that I was largely, sa- not largely, because I think Twilight Princess isn't a very good game, but the, the, I was soured on Twilight Princess having to play it on Wii with those goddamn controls. I was like, this is an abomination. I can't believe I'm fucking playing this game like this. You know, like, why can't I just plug in a goddamn GameCube controller and play the game? You know, like, that was like just a what that was like oh this waggle shit is driving me nuts but it did it worked sometimes i thought it worked fine in mario galaxy for instance the waggle yeah. did not bother me mario yeah galaxy. me neither um, I, I couldn't stand it really? mario galaxy yeah. felt shockingly good to me like considering how un like unorthodox that whole control style is of having the nut like the nunchuck just mario galaxy was yeah for me was i was sitting there i'm like this is so beautiful and cool i hate i have trouble with the perspective they're putting me in i'm missing jumps i shouldn't miss and why can't i use a fucking controller but uh, but features I think about I mean my my beloved Resistance franchise has you know like the the whole thing with the Resistance games that that makes them special other than I think their story which I think is awesome is um, the secondary of effects of all the weapons and how like you know like the bullseye for instance like you can tag an enemy Advanced Warfare totally ripped it off like you can you can like completely fucking ripped it off and that's one of the things I asked him when we were on the show I'm like you know did you get inspiration from other things because this is clearly the bullseye from Resistance uh, is you tag an enemy and then they just go behind cover and the bullets like follow them you know like that was one of those cool things but 
that always felt th- that kind of thing always felt tacked tack on where I'm like, I just want to play a shooter. Yep. You know, like I don't need all this stuff. I'm never going to use. I'm using it because I feel like I should be, but I don't mm-hmm. have to. Those are the worst features in any game is like when it's there and you don't have to use it and therefore you don't. Like, I don't like those kinds of options. Maybe some people do, but I don't like something where it's, like, tacked on to be different, but you don't actually need to use it. Making making systems more complicated than they should be to try to inspire you to do something different with it, right? And this is a, a very Greg Miller example of this, but you can apply it to your favorite game, Ghostbusters. And the fact that I was so excited to play Ghostbusters and be have a, you know, HD Ghostbusters game and be a Ghostbuster, right? And, like, they, like, we modeled the proton pack and made it look exact, and then we gave it three different shooting me- mechanisms and features, and it's shooting, like, blue electric and it's like what are you fucking doing just give me a proton pack i want to just be a ghostbuster i don't want all this different ass crap yeah i mean i think my application of that's pokemon where it's just like there's so much shit in these pokemon games now where it's like there's beauty contests and you dress them up and you do all and it's like why like no one wants to do this stuff like this isn't fun and it's like now then they they if it was all side stuff whatever but it's like they found a way to force it into the main story of each game yeah and so you have to get at least one Gold medal in the freaking talent contest. Sure. Goddamn Pikachu yeah, that's, needs that's to just sing. A, that's just annoying as hell. I and mean, it's not cool. It's a tale as old as time right now, but forced in multiplayer, right? Like oh. Freedom Wars was a great fucking 30-hour experience by myself or playing with Christine or whatever, but then now there's missions I need three other people for. It's like, where am I going to fucking find three other Vita? I don't want to organize a room and do all this different stuff. Just let me play the game the way I want to play the game. Mm-hmm. Now you're fucked. And I think, you know... We're ragging on games, but there's there's games of well, these are deep, games we like. of deep complexity. But but I'm, I'm saying there are games of deep complexity that nail complexity. The game I think about is Final Fantasy Tactics. That game is fucking crazy deep, insanely deep. You know, for like to the to the nth degree how you play that game how you structure your party how you learn classes how you buy items and weapons how your characters die permanently all these kinds of things. But it all felt like it needed to be there and that's the, that's what makes a game like that a masterpiece when and, and Final Fantasy Tactics is a, definitively a masterpiece is when the game is overflowing with depth another example is Civilization 5 when a game mm-hmm. is so deep where I've played Civ 5 for a fucking insane amount of time I still don't really understand the entire game mm-hmm. like but you know it's all there and it makes sense and when you meet someone like we met with Sid Meier or whatever it's like you, this guy just knows what he's doing and it all makes sense, and 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 there and there's a complexity to it. With something like tactics, I think about our tactics ogre, where it's like deep on a class based system, deep on a grid based system, uh, the turn based systems, the weapons and armor, the magic, the way your characters evolve and and up a level up and stuff like that, and it all makes sense and it all fits. That's the beauty is when a game is so systemically complicated yet it works together like a beautiful like a beautiful like you know play on a stage or something and every every piece is is right in place and nothing feels out of place and every and then and that's that's so on the other end of the spectrum is you can have deep complexity with games you like and mm-hmm. and they work but i think simplicity is often king you know we think about mario world for instance on super nintendo is not that different from mario one it just it just it has more stages and you have a few more powers but basically the game's the same they're very familiar if you could see one in the other if you can show colin in 1988 mario world in 1991 you would understand how to play the game yeah um little t- small iterations are often better like that and i think simplicity is often king and that's why a lot of the games that we love most i think are the simplest you know mm-hmm. and i don't mean simple in that they're easy i mean simple in that you can understand them and it's, you wrap the, your head and it's the rigors of playing them that can be difficult yeah N- not the complexity of the systems you know Nintendo's good at that, generally. Mm-hmm. Nintendo's very good at that. There's only yeah. a few games that they don't they don't nail with that, like Fire Emblem, I don't think. Like and, and, and for instance, like that's not a series that resonates with me. I don't think they I don't think they make good strategy games. Well what's like interesting, I, I mean I love Fire Emblem. I love it so much, but what you're saying about tactics tactics just being completely right and every system is necessary. Like with Fire Fire Emblem Awakening, it has the support system where it's like you like team up and stuff. And it's it's great and it's fun and all that stuff, but it's like it's not necessary and it does feel kinda like here's more stuff, just have more stuff. That's the way I felt when I, I mean, Fire Emblem Awakening, I think was the last yep. one. That was the first one I had like really, really, really delved into because my, my big problem with Fire Emblem, um, and it was just from reading about it, I'm not sure how like overstated the issue was, was that there was a linearness to Fire Emblem where like it wasn't, the cool thing about tactics was that you could just play at your own speed kind of. If you're not ready for the next mission, you could just go back and fuck around. And you yeah. really couldn't do that in many Fire Emblem games. Where, well, like, you, Awakening was probably the most at least the ones I played, it's the, the most open where you can kind of go back. And, and that's why, and that's why it was, so, that's how it was sold to me with mm-hmm. people. I mean, I'm going to get into it. And I was just like, I don't, but even then it was not legit. No, it was no, still no. Just like, Oh, you can go back and face some random enemies a couple times. Right. Like, 
and so I felt constrained, and that was my problem with with Fire Emblem. Also, I I, I just that game just didn't resonate with me. I thought I was gonna love it. Mm-hmm. Um, I love, and it right. just didn't it just didn't resonate with me. There was something there was something off about it. But I want to give Nintendo credit where credit is due, and obviously Nintendo's you know intelligent systems, for instance, or Nintendo's mm-hmm. other developers. There's a lot of they, they understand Fire Emblem's a bad example of it, but they understand the simplicity mantra um, and how that can create depth. If you get to Star World in Mario World, for instance, there's nothing um, simple about it, mm-hmm. you know? But, like, but playing it is simple. Yeah. You know? It's just mastering it isn't simple or finding all the Yoshi coins isn't simple, even yeah. though, you know, the tools are all there. You just have to figure it out. Yep. I like those kinds of games. Not mm-hmm. games that put in that put in just extraneous shit to make it seem deep, even though it's not. Uh, if I if I only need a machine gun to be to beat a shooter, I'm only going to use the machine gun. Yeah, mm. no matter how many other you know, different like, guns yeah, you yeah, put yeah. in yeah. perks, yeah. Yeah, so another for me, a feature that I was like, Oh, this is so unnecessary, I don't want this was Flood in Mario Sunshine, where it's like I just wanted to play Mario. It's like I wanted Mario sixty four again, I just want to run around and stuff. But then it's like when you play it though, it's different. Then it's like, Oh shit, you were right, Nintendo. You were actually right, this is good. It's not what I wanted. I still want this other Mario, but like you created something awesome with this. And uh, that might be one of the the very rare instances where there was a feature that I was like, no, don't do this, and it ended up being awesome. Well, I think that about Tony Hawk and its freaking projectile mode. Probably not. It's you sound, don't know. It sounds it sounds stupid, but I mean, I, I'm you know I'm waiting to see what they're gonna do with this. I'm I'm a huge Tony Hawk fan from way back too. But I only played like the one, two, and three, I guess, and then I just stopped. I'm, like, I'm over. It. And remember, I remember buying that game Thrasher too, because it was supposed to be like more realistic. I mean, it's a fucking that game sucked. Um, but I was really into those skating games for a while. That's like one of the one of the only surviving pictures of me ever playing a game in that era is me playing Tony Hawk on my PlayStation. Mm-hmm. Um, I got to dig up that picture because it's horrifying. Um, but uh, what's horrifying about it? It's just it's just Colin in tenth grade. Okay, <laughs> so sounds horrifying. Horrifying. Um, so I'm I'm gonna wait and see approach. It sounds dumb, but Tony Hawk was kind of always dumb. It is. I mean, that's the thing. Like Tony Hawk's always been. It's very arcadey. It's very. Let's get a high score. Let's. Can I do that? Oh, I can. How can I? Can I do it better? And like, I love that type of shit. And it's like, oh, hey, Spider Man's a playable character, and like Darth Vader or Darth Maul, or whatever. It's like that's awesome. I love that stuff. Um, Officer Dick and all this shit. But like, getting that again, I I want nothing more than that. Because I'm that type of guy. I just want the experiences I loved, again, with a shiny new coat of paint. But then I look at this coat of paint, and I'm just like, ah, oh, this looks like the same PS3 HD game that I played a couple years ago, and the physics were slightly off. Yeah, yeah. And it's being made by the same guys, the Robomoto. And they're like, we like, had a hit before. We'll make it a hit again. And I'm just like, ah. I mean, I'm st- here's my thing. For all the shit that I'm talking, I'm going to play this game. I'm going to platinum it for all intents and purposes. You're not going to platinum it. I might. No. I mean, I... I I might be wrong about this. You gotta see the, the trophy. The, don't don't commit until you see the list. But whatever it is, I tried platinuming the HD one just because like I really like this stuff. And I go? like I, I might have done it. I might be wrong. Someone tell me. I probably did it. But anyways, I'm gonna try. Okay. I'm good. I'm glad. I I'm want you to, you know. I want you to enjoy this game. To I don't want you to get too hung up on the projectiles. We don't know what that means. It could be anything. Maybe it's a Fast and Furious minigame. I don't want that. Shoot Vin Diesel's necklace at Michelle Rodriguez's face. You won me over, Greg.